Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at the theme of fear in Never Let Me Go. And we've got a few more quotations to look at that I'll try and keep her under 10 minutes. So the first one is, she was afraid of us in the same way someone might be afraid of spiders. Now, this is when Cathy sees Madame leaving Hailsham. And it represents the outside world's fear of the clones. So it represents how everyone outside sees, sees these creatures. And it's like creatures. Um, the word spiders obviously has connotations of disgust and um, something that quite a lot of people are scared of. So we see these connotations in this. It also looks, um, sorry, continues the motif of animals, very fitting that um, we see throughout the text, for example, Tommy's animals, and here we see it in a way that represents this fear. She's also one of the few secondary characters we see that's outside Helsham, whereas the Guardians and obviously the clones are very much inside Helsham, they belong to that world, Madame and Kethers are partly out. So it's interesting to see that Kethers and Madame both have the same reaction, they both like to keep distance between them and the clones, um, an emotional distance and a physical distance. This is when she kind of almost brushes against Kathy. So we see that kind of physical disgust as well. This will also link to the theme of humanity, so what it means to be a human um, by or sorry, by Kathy thinking that she sees them as spiders, this creates the idea that they're not human because they're something less. They're thin because they're animals. And in context, you can think about all other times in history where people have been treated as less than humans. We've seen in the Holocaust, we saw that people were treated as less than humans. And this could be what Ishiguri is raising an issue of. So what is a human? What, what, what does it mean to be human? And why do we, as humans, treat other people as less so? The next quotation then is to do with settings, so it's a dark fringe of trees cast a shadow over the whole of Hailsham. Now we know that Hailsham is kind of this little bubble and they're protected from the outside world. So I think that this um, quotation is a metaphor for the clone's fear of the outside world. So I think implicitly they know that inside Hailsham they're safe. And therefore, what's outside Hailsham is something, um, something therefore dangerous. So um, this image of a dark fringe of trees that cast this shadow, um, we get the sense that they know that whatever's outside is more dangerous. Um, throughout the text as well, we've got this symbolism of the forest and the fences. Um, so we do get the sense of that difference between the clones inside Hailsham and everyone else on the outside world, which also links to that theme and idea of humanity we were looking at before. This is also important, um, an important quotation to think about the importance of setting in the novel. Obviously, we have specific settings um, Ishiguri creates. So one of them is Hailsham, and this is what defines, um, sorry, differentiates Hailsham from the outside world. Um, we have the recovery centres, we have we have the stranded boat on the um, on the beach. So we've got these very, very different settings which all represent different aspects of Kathy's life. Third quotation then is this one. So this is what Ruth says when they go to Norfolk, obviously another important setting as well. We all know it, we're modelled from trash. Junkies, prostitutes, winos, tramps. And I think that this is partly representative of the clones' fear of accepting reality. And this is such a dramatic kind of climax in the um, text because um, we don't really see this before. We don't really see this accepting of reality. It's one of the times the characters um, in the text are truly honest. And this is obviously because we've just had a disappointment. She knows that she she accepts that her possible's not real. She loses this hope. And this is what the characters are scared of accepting. And I've spoken in a previous video about how Kathy doesn't accept reality. So talking about her narrative viewpoint, she's very, very narrow in what she looks at and what she talks about. 
Um, so thinking about the avoidance of the narrative voice and how she avoids talking about things that upset her. It's only until the very last chapters of the book that we see her kind of truly admitting some of the things she's denied. Um, said here the character's manifestation of fear. So this is what they fear. This is what we know from the cottages. Um, Kathy's been flicking through the porn books to try and find an image of herself. And this um, quite blunt trio of sentences represents how, shush, represents how um, they, sorry, this, um, these three sentences, they're very short, we all know it, we're modelled from trash, junkies, prostitutes, winos, tramps. And it's very, very to the point that these characters have been avoiding the truth for so long that the one time Ruth says what they're all thinking, it comes out like this. And this is the opposite of a device that we looked at in a previous video, um, Polly Sinderton. Here we've got a Sinderton so in that final sentence, junkies, prostitutes, winos, tramps. Technically, we should have an and before that last noun. So it should be junkies, prostitutes, winos, and or or tramps we should have a connective um, but because we don't I think it really really shows the vehemence of Ruth's statement she's stating the kind of worst things that she can say she doesn't say alcoholic she says why no she uses the slang for them she wants to put forward this disgust she feels for her history final quotation I've picked them there are lots more you could choose but it's this one if you knew for sure you complete, it would be easier, but they never tell us for sure. And this is a really, really important quotation for the fear of the future and the fact that lots of these things that the clones are told, they're not fully told. And if they got told it or if they admitted it themselves, it would probably be a lot easier. We've got the euphemism here, which is used throughout the text. So um, rather than saying die, all of the clones say complete. So if you knew for sure you complete, if you knew for sure you die, it would be easier, but they never tell us for sure. So this euphemism represents the clones' fear of mortality. They're scared of dying. So again, like we've been talking about, they avoid talking about it. So they use this euphemism. Um, it also links to the theme of secrets. So the fact that, um, they've gone in the way. So the fact that um, they're not told a lot of the time, the fact that the guardians um, tell them but don't tell them they're told but not told, um, it links to that theme and how no one's kind of ever really truthful. And we've looked at this quotation in the previous video, it's a really important one. Ishiguro said that this novel is meant to be a metaphor, a metaphor for how we face reality. And we all know... We all know, sorry, that we are going to die. It's part of human life, we're all going to die. But for these clones, this reality is compounded. They know that they're going to die in their early, mid-twenties, up to their kind of late twenties. Kathy's particularly unusual because she's 31 and she hasn't started donating. But that means that usually by the time they're at that age, they would have donated. So all these clones know that they're going to die. And imagine if we knew that we were going to die at 30. That would be kind of, imagine what your life would be like before then, how much you'd kind of think about death and how much you'd be faced with death, especially Pippin, especially if your life was as constricted as theirs are. The fact that they've been raised and born and bred and educated to die. So and I think this is what kind of Ishiguro means when he says that he doesn't want this to be a novel about sci-fi. The science fiction elements aren't important. What's important is the characters and how they face this sense of death. And the fact that none of them ever say the word die, the fact that they all kind of try to avoid the truth, um, except when it bursts out in these very dramatic, violent ways, like um, when Ruth said that quotation before, 
this is what's important about the novel, this avoidance of, of reality and how we deal with this idea of death. Right, just under 10 minutes, hope that's been useful. Sorry about the cat.